The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. And to all our affiliates who are joining us at this time on the Talkstar Radio Network, welcome one and all. This is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and now across Europe. Our toll-free number is one 877 That's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My email address is exone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our websites, www.exoneradio.com and www.xzonetv.com. My guest this hour is William Constantine, Born an indigo child of the star evolution, William has ascended into the ninth dimension of consciousness, which is also considered full Christ consciousness. He continues to raise his vibration and conscious level, aiming for the thirteenth dimension, which is universal consciousness. William has survived uh, a life fraught with every possible personal challenge available to human experience, the foster care system enduring a two-and-a-half-year molestation, the tragic loss of his grandparents, the loss of his birth mother to AIDS, being homeless for a duration more than once, divorce, separation, and so much more. All of this by the age of 26. William is far from throwing himself a pity party. Instead, he seems to be empowered by the by these experiences and devotes his life to sharing his message of love and healing to the world. With his message of unity... We are all one. There is nothing that separates us except whatever illusion we choose to create. We are all God, and thus we are all love. Love is all there is. Anything else is an illusion. And William Constantine, welcome to the show. Nice having you back with us, William. How are you? Thank you, Rob. Thanks for having me. Uh, William, um, you believe that 2012 marks the end of the world according to the Mayans. Now, what do you think the meaning of 2012 is? Well, I, I actually believe that, that 2012 marks the end of the world as, as kind of we know it, and mm-hmm. it's, more of a, it's more marking a shift of, uh, of consciousness um, where, where human evolution is, is evolving into, a, into a, higher, a higher level. And actually, if you get into 2012, it's really a... Um, it's really about uh, Mayan lore and uh, and uh, mythology about their um, this kind of this uh, this um, game in the sky, so to speak. Um, it, and and it, that's really basically what it's signifying is is this um, this uh, rebirth, mm-hmm. you know, like the rebirth of of uh, Earth and humanity and, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much. It, it, that in combination with with you, you know the the star children, which we'll get a, into a little bit later, but you, you know with them being born, um, it's kind of all shifting us towards this this change of uh, of 2012. And I think if you stop and you look and you look back, you could see how everybody now all of a sudden now we have this go green evolution like movement that's kind of happening, where everybody is now becoming Earth conscious. And, and um, you know, you're starting to see people uh, become more aware and, 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 and more um, uh, Earth-friendly vehicles, you know, with the hybrids, be, you know, coming out. And, and you have a lot of other, 
things kind of growing and, and people are, are, are turning more into the, the we'll say, the new William, age. stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. William Constantine is our special guest, and William and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Hi, this is Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout, here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. I would like to invite all of our listeners to the second annual Parunity Conference, January 27th through the 29th in Felsmere, Florida. We have some exciting speakers, including Brian Kano from The Haunted Collector, author Andrea Perrin, whose book inspired the hit movie The Conjuring, and our own Rob McConnell. There are events for the public as well as opportunities for paranormal teams to come together to share information. We also have opportunities for our guests to participate in some investigations of Felsmere's most haunted locations. Check out my website at www.paranormalstakeout.com or www.paranormalfbi.com for times and details. Hope to see you there. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. William Constantine is our special guest, www.williamconstantine.com. And uh, when I was reading your intro, William, you said that we are all one. How can you explain this? Um, basically that, you know, we're all interconnected. And, and, and if you stop and you think that we all are our individual gods, you know, which are brought together by the universal consciousness, mm-hmm. um, that, that there is no separation between you and I. There, I mean, there is, really is no time and space where, where I end and, and, say, Rob McConnell begins. You know, we kind of, uh, we, that's all like an illusion to support the, the sort of the ego aspect of, of wanting to be different because if we're different, then we, can, then it, it, we kind of can rise above everybody else and put ourselves on a pedestal rather than all understand from the from the universal standpoint that we're all one and we're all interconnected and you know whether from you to a fly to a you know to uh... an animal in the sea you know we're we're all one uh... being really there's only one of us on on the planet so if you go from that level and and i know it's difficult to really understand because a lot of people say well you know i i walk through the mall and there's several people there like how 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 can we all be one and if you really stop, I mean, I do workshops where I put people who um, I let clicks kind of form in, in a natural sort of way. And so after they uh, have formed, then I, 
diversify everybody and split them all up and put them into different groups where they're intermingling with people that they wouldn't ordinarily intermingle with. And they really find out that there's, there is really no difference between them, you, you know, and, and that it's all their stereotypes, you, you know, and this, and this thinking that society kind of uh, has us doing within our heads. Because you're already judging people just if you pass by somebody you're constantly passing judgment on, on them, whether, you know, you don't like something that they're wearing, whether it's their perfume, the way they look, mm -hmm. the, you know, even the way they smell, you, you know. So you're, you're constantly passing this judgment. And if you get beyond that point and you rise above that and you realize that, that there really is no difference between you and I, there is no difference between, um, you, you know, uh, us and say the Middle Eastern people that that right now we, we decide to be fighting, you know, I think that wars would end and people would really um, have nothing to really argue about if if we all can reach this this level of consciousness of unity and, and the fact that there is no separation between us all. Couldn't agree with you more. Um. Can you briefly tell us about the Star Children and what their purpose is? Sure. The Star Children, um, they're uh, an evolution of which I'm uh, of which I'm one. You first, you have your Indigos, which are really like the trailblazers. They kind of come through and challenge anything that kind of lacks integrity. Um, so whether it's a government system, a legal system, a school system, uh, just a person, you, you know that they feel maybe lacks integrity and they feel, um, you know, maybe a system is in place because, you know, as a society we like to place forth systems that, that no longer serve us or, or never really served the purpose in the first place. So um, this, the indigos kind of challenge this and then, and then kind of knock that down and wipe that clean. And then you have your, your crystal children who come in and they're really um, – uh, all about kind of love and compassion and, and healing because they come born of, of, of Christ consciousness or universal consciousness, so, which, is, which is the rainbow children. They, they come next. And your crystals, they, they basically are really um, there to help people realize, one, that we're all one, and two, um, that... Uh, that everybody is a loving being and that, and that we're all able to work collectively together and, and create and, and usher in this, this new earth, so to speak. And each level of these, of these children, um, they come in at a different uh, level of vibration. The highest, you, you know, is, is obviously the, uh, the 13th, uh, which is the universal um, consciousness, and that's what rainbow children are born at. Like they just have an instant knowing of... Pretty much how the inter, uh, how the universe works, how the law of attraction works, how everything else works, and a lot of these children are being falsely diagnosed because they start their life really doing telepathic communication. So they don't actually verbally communicate um, until later on um, in life, and so they get diagnosed as being autistic and and. Um, a has been Asperger's and, and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that some, some of these, um, uh, Ill, I don't want to say illnesses, but some of these... Um, diagnosis? Yes, some of these diagnoses don't, don't really exist. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that I think the medical uh, standpoint of things is automatically really quick to, to diagnose um, things that they don't really understand rather I mean you're never going to get a doctor to say yeah I think this person is highly sensitive or you know highly psychic mm -hmm. I really don't think that we're going to get to that point anytime in the near future you know unless unless there's another breed of doctors that are coming out but these these children are really here to pretty much bring in the new earth or, or kind of like bring in utopia um, and and hence the shift of consciousness that's really what we're all what we're all about is shifting consciousness and and making everybody aware that regardless of what religion that you you know that you follow that's fine but you you don't necessarily have to be religious to be a spiritual person and to be in touch with the universe you know it, it's not against any religion to use the law of attraction 
How long have these uh, indigo children been coming to this planet, and where did they come from? Uh, the indigo children are, are well, basically, I mean, they come from, it's a, really their first time uh, around Earth. And um, they, they, they come from what, they, what they, people call the, the, the stars or the, the heavens. That's hence the, you, you know, the title of the evolution is, is the star children. So um, that's pretty much where they come from. So they're, they're, they're pretty much higher beings kind of sent down to, to usher in this, new, uh, this newer evolution for, for humanity because we've screwed it up so bad. So, um, y- you know, I think that that's, that's really their purpose. They come from, y- you know, the cosmos, basically. Um, and and well, we're really here to just help usher in this new line of thinking and, and really help to revamp... Um, you know, uh, humanity's thoughts and, and the way society works. Now, whom, whose decision was it to send the indigo children at this specific time in our planet's evolution? Uh, God. You, you know, I, I think that, I, I think that um, you know, if you, if you go back, I think it's very important to realize that, that religion, modernized religion, separates us from God. And the indigo and, and, the, and the star children evolution is saying, no, that's not right, that, mm-hmm. that we're all connected to God and that we all are gods and we're all able to create um, the life that we want to live. And I'm not just talking about the law of attraction and saying, you, you know, because first you, you obviously have to follow that up with thought. You, nobody's just going to sit on their couch and say they want a million dollars and it's just going to fall from the Of heavens. course, exactly. You, you, you know, so... I mean, the the secret is a great m- movie and it's a great concept, but you have to follow it up with action, you, you, you know. And and it's not and it's not, um, you, you know, you have to phrase things. And and there, when we think things, there's this underlying thought that always happens. So if you're not really coming from a place of love and and belief in yourself that that you're at this place already, then the law of attraction isn't going to help you. You know, because then you have this underlying subthought saying that you're not you're not really there and that you're desiring to get that. But and so that's what the universe is going to respond on. You know, God and the universe pretty much only say yes. So if you say you know that that you need something or, or that you're lacking of something, it's just going to pretty much agree with you. And then you also have you, you know um, what you resist persists, which is basically saying that anything that you don't want to experience you're basically causing yourself to experience that by by not wanting to experience understand plus another good example would be uh, that you know since god created us in his own image then if god created us in his image then we are in the image of god which means that we are gods ourselves yeah but see a lot of people don't rationalize it that way and, and they think it's you, you know, blasphemous to think that 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 we can call ourselves gods. But you know, if if you take Jesus Christ, who was probably the the uh, biggest leading uh, metaphysical practitioner there ever was. I mean, he practiced alchemy by turning water into wine. Mm-hmm. You know, he resurrected the dead. He communicated yes. with angels, and and in a direct link to God. Which, if anybody truly follows Christ, then how come the world is so screwed up as 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 it is now? No, oh, that's the million dollar question, my young friend. You, you know, like if nobody really uh, organized religion is just that organized religion. The mm-hmm. the, the it's just a be, as bad as organized crime. You, you know, only with the, even less of a purpose. You, you know, there's there's the fact of the matter that the Bible was written a hundred years after Christ died, and nowhere in the Bible does it say that he was followed around by a reporter. You know, yet, but King James Version of the Bible says that everything in red is exactly what Jesus Christ said. So All right, is please. it a channeling of Christ, or mm-hmm. is it, you, you know, or is it something else? All right, stand by, William. You and I have to take our news at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, Nation, if you'd like to give us a call and uh, speak to our special guest this hour, William Constantine. Our toll-free number is one eight seven seven five two eight. 
8255. Still to come on tonight's show, Ralph Ellis will be joining me in the final hour of this broadcast. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, and we'll be back on the other side of this news break right here on the top. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. We all desire health, happiness, and fulfillment, but often get in our own way. Repeated patterns that leave us out of control can keep us feeling powerless, frustrated, and unable to move forward in spite of our best efforts. Unconscious patterning disconnects us from our gifts, often destroying the very thing we seek. But there is an answer. We can take charge of our destiny and heal the trauma of our history. Shamanism is an effective ancient modality that can reconnect us with our true selves, empower the creation of our dreams, and return us to health and balance. Cody Alexander is a certified shamanic practitioner and teacher with 11 years experience. Email HealingPathways33 at gmail.com or visit CodyAlexander.net to schedule a long-distance shamanic session today. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and this portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Dita Wegman. She is the author of Nostradamus Dream Interpretation Guide. Real Dreams Predicting Your Tomorrow, The Power of the Stars, How They Move Us Humans. Visit her website at www.nostradamusdreams.com. Our special guest this hour is William Constantine, and uh, William, always great having you here on the x um, Now, what are the different degrees of consciousness? We, I, I, now, according to your bio, you are now in the... Um, what degree of consciousness are you in? The ninth. ninth. Yeah, which is, yeah, um, Christ consciousness. You, you know, everybody is really born in, in the third and fourth uh, level of consciousness, except for the star children, which, you, you know, they, they just kind of happen to come a little bit more ascended and, and tapped into mm-hmm. um, higher levels. Um, so there's 13 degrees. You know, you, you have your, your, your basic people, which are... Which are most of us walking through life in, in this third dimensional level of consciousness, uh, and, and we're kind of stuck in this in this thought process. And, and the, really, the whole purpose of the Star Children is to, to help us ascend to higher levels of consciousness. Because if we're all at Christ consciousness or we're all at Universal consciousness, imagine what a better world we'd actually be living in if we actually all understood the law of one and all understood how interconnected we were you know, how all the, that other stuff would kind of fall to the wayside. Um, so then you have your, your um, you, you kind of ascend through, through that to the, to the ninth level. That's like pretty much the, the next, um, you, you know, the next big jump, which is, which is Christ consciousness. And then after Christ consciousness, the, the last, the final jump that you have is the, the 13th uh, level of, of consciousness, which is, universal consciousness and that's pretty much 
what the rainbow children uh, kind of come in being born at. And then obviously there's different levels that you just, it's just kind of like spiritual upgrades that you're constantly kind of going through. And um, the, the star children also help by raising the vibration of, of pretty much the world and, and allowing other people to, to ascend into these higher levels of consciousness. So by, by our presence kind of being here, it's, it's, it's enabling other people to reach these higher levels of consciousness, which may not have been possible if it weren't for, you know, your indigo, your crystals, and, and your rainbow, and whatever comes afterwards. How can someone listening know if they're an indigo child, or a crystal child, or a rainbow child? Well, I, I think that um, the, the key sides of things is, is really, if you're an indigo child, pretty much you've always had this warrior, like, warrior-like spirit, and you constantly challenge things, and, and you have this kind of built-in lie detector, mm-hmm. you, you know, uh, to where you kind of just know if somebody's BSing you or not, and, and, and you know, I mean, and you know when you're being patronized, and, and you know when somebody's just trying to, like, pull the wool over your eyes um, or manipulate you. So indigos pretty much... Um, that's their that's their type of mentality. Uh, crystal children they're really quick to forgive. Most some of the crystals are now just reaching into like young or uh, like younger adulthoods, like into their twenties and stuff. Even though we, we still call them children, you, you know, because some are still being born. Indigos have uh, been around. Oh wow. Uh, I think the first big wave actually happened like around the 1970s, 1980s, um, and, and that. But not that's not to say that there were weren't indigos before that. Mm-hmm. You, you know that that kind of helped evolve uh, things as it goes. So um, the crystals they're really uh, quick to forgive. You know, yeah, they ha- they have a little bit of a temper. You, you know, but it, it pretty much. Um, just goes it falls like it, they're just really loving and 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 they really um they get over things really quickly so if you're one of those people who you know might have a blow up or an argument with somebody and then and then at the end you just pretty much you pretty much wash your hands of it you know not a lot of people are like that so if you're like that odds are you're you, you know you're of the crystal you know vibration and the, the rainbow children um they're pretty much just being born now so uh, you, you know, I would just pay attention to, uh, the, you know, your younger kids um, being born and, and how they're interacting with things. And, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of asking your child questions, you know, even at a young age. And, and I, I never believed in, you, you know, uh, talking down to a baby or this baby talk that parents kind of do to their children. I always talk to my child just like, like one-on-one. one on one mm-hmm. And I never dumbed down my my language or anything. So I think that that's really what parents need to do because with this new evolution of of children being born, the parents need to be ascended as well so that they can nurture and care for these for the, for these children and really understand that if there's nothing really wrong with how your child's communicating with you, aside from what medical you, you know gurus say nowadays. You, you know, is there really a reason to medicate these children? And and you know, if if there's really no harm to the child, you know, if they if they're delayed in talking a little bit later in in life, then what's really what's the harm? You know, if they're if they're able to communicate to you and you're able to understand them, then what's the problem? And a lot of these children communicate telepathically with their parents. I mean, I've um, read situations and and. Um, and even met a few situations where the parents would have these kind of thinking contests with the children, and and the the children would know when the parents wanted them, and they'd just come into the room, you, you know. And I think we've all had similar instances when maybe when we were children, and you might have thought that your mom or your dad called you, and you run into the other room, and you're like, "Hey, did you call me?" And they were like, "No, but while you're here, you, you know." Let's, you know, let's do this. And the thing is, is they thought about you, you know, at that point, and you just picked up telepathically. See, there's nothing 
everyone, every last one of us is psychic, you, you know, and, and, and able to communicate telepathically. And, and we do uh, on a subconscious level, and we're not really aware of it. And so the point of the indigo and, and the crystal and the star children evolution is not only to bring you in, uh, into awareness, but also to let you know that you do have these experiences, and when you ha- when you in, the moment you admit that you have these experiences, then you suddenly start to recognize them and recognize that you're experiencing them on a lot more frequent basis than what you originally thought. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free. William Constantine is our very special guest, and uh, William. Just like to go back, uh, we, we were talking about Jesus, and he was being an alchemist, uh, and because he could turn water into wine, um, would you say that Jesus was psychic? Yes, I, you know, I, I actually I would because I believe that. I mean, just two seconds ago, I said that we're all psychic. Yes. So, you, you know, and I think that um, as a follower of of. Uh, or, or I'm not a follower of organized religion, but I, I, I work with Christ on, on an, an ascended master basis because that's pretty much what he is. You know, and, and there's, um, there's a lot of things that Christ did. I mean, he predicted things in the Bible, but we tend to pass that off. You, you know, um, where, where was that in the Bible where he said that you shall deny me three times? You, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like... He's constantly making prophecies throughout the Bible. You, you know, there's there's um, the fact that, that he is, like, a big metaphysician as far as the way that he practiced alchemy, the way that he had a direct connection with God, and he was already aware that pretty much we were all one and that, and that we had the innate power to heal and, and, and that when we act from love that, that we can transform not only ourselves, but the lives of the others that we touch, you, you know, and, and, and I think at that point you have to realize that, that nobody at this point is, is, is actually following Christ, the Christ that is portrayed in the Bible and the, and, and, the, and the Christ that I know as an ascended master, which is far greater than what's actually portrayed in the Bible. As, as a as an ascended master, what how how are you classified as an ascended master? Who categorizes these uh, these titles? Um, well, an ascend, I'm not an ascended master. I, Christ is an ascended master. See, you have these um, uh, le- beings um, that that uh, kind of do gooders that like. Mother Teresa is now an ascended master. So now you have like these um, people who who really were kind of like gurus at the time that they were that they were living, mm-hmm. you know. And and now they've they've gone over to the other side, and their teachings have even expanded even more and, and into higher levels of of uh, dimensional of thinking. So what they do is they communicate to people on a regular basis. And they they put forth this kind of this uh, uh, information from a, a higher level of uh, of, of thought. So uh, you, yep. Go ahead. No, I was I was just going to ask you because you, you know it, you are supposed you're you're considered to be on the same conscious level as Christ, the full Christ consciousness. So does this mean that you are on the same spiritual, like, consciousness level that Christ was? Uh, yes. I mean, this, this Christ consciousness basically means that you have the, the, same, um, the, the same knowing that Christ had when, when, when he was alive. So the knowing that, that everybody is one and the, and the knowing that, that acting from love and, and not from ego or, or, or um, anything that society, because from the moment we're born, mm-hmm. society is filling our heads with, with negative thought and negative images of, of not only ourselves, but, you, you know, they, they put limits on us, you, you know. And, and the moment you start limiting your potential is, is really the only t- that's You can only become as good as what you limit yourself to be. 
So, and you can't rise above that. So the moment you start capping off your potential, mm-hmm. you can't rise above that. So now you've just, you've just limited yourself, at, you know, and you're a being of unlimited potential. Look at all the stuff that, that, that Christ did when he was here. And look at if we, if we act from a place of love and, and we teach people that, you know, we all have a message within us and, and, and that we all need to share this message. I mean, look at the stuff that you're doing. You, you know, just by bringing the radio show to, to I mean, I'm, I'm sure it didn't start off, you, you know, as many countries as, as, as you're at now. Oh, of course you not. You know, yeah. so, and, and now all of a sudden it's, it's become this mass production, you, you know, and, and you're bringing your message and your word and, and, and also the messages of your guests and, and, and stuff to, to, to a global audience, mm-hmm. you, you know, so I, I think that, you, you know, the kudos should be given to you for, for even attempting to do something like this. Because for a lot of people, the thought that there's life on other planets and stuff like this, it, it, that's all fabricated. You, you know, but there, there was a time and place where people didn't believe that angel communication existed. But look how popular it is now. Big time, big time. And more and more people are having angelic experiences and encounters. Yep, absolutely, and that's the and that's the thing. And so it's like if you you have to understand that how how egotistical of us and and naive of us to think that we're the only existence of life. You, what, you know. What about uh, what about the fairies, for example? Uh, they've been around for you know children read about them in uh, their uh, in in their school books. They're in fiction. They're in movies. What were yeah, fairies? You know, I honestly, I, I think that, um, uh, first off, I, I'd have to say that I believe that fairies exist. Mm-hmm. So, I, because you have to stop and think that I think that fairies are going to be the next big level of angels. You see what I'm saying? Like, people are now all of a sudden, like you're saying, they're starting to come into the consciousness. Yeah. And, and, and you're starting to, to recognize more and more things, and now you have fairy tarot decks and all this other mm-hmm. stuff, and... There's even fairy Wicca, like a, a certain magic that is practiced, you know, to help connect you with the fairies. And, and the fairies are really, um, some of them, they just don't like to be seen, you, you see. And so that's what's always reflected in, in these, in, in uh, your fairy tales, you know, is that, is that if, if you see a fairy, then some people go blind, some people, you know, um, ex- experience loss of memory, all this other stuff. And, and so when you get to this point of, of really opening your awareness and, and recognizing that, that there's a world parallel and within the universe that, that, we're, that we're operating in and that society has really put on these, these dark shades of blindness. William, we've got to take a commercial break. William Constantine is our special guest, and this portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed by Carolyn Bartz. Visit her website at www.secretsofcatattitudereveal. It's a perfect book. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. We'll be back on the other side as we continue live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. 
Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Karen Bentley, Sugar-Free Miracle. How to beat the sweets and back the fat and be skinny ever after. Visit Karen's website at www.sugarfreemiracle.com. That's Karen Bentley, Sugar-Free Miracle, www.sugarfreemiracle.com. First of all, William, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's always great having you on the show. And I was wondering if you could tell us about your upcoming appearance at the Haunted Hotel San Carlos in Phoenix, Arizona, where you're going to be doing lectures, gallery readings, and taking part in two haunting investigations. Yes, actually, it's uh, going to be, uh, the, I believe, the weekend of the 26th or the 27th of September. Um, and uh, Past Paranormal is going to uh, bring me down there, pretty much. Um, there's uh, Dr. Turi is also going to be there. Um, who's a, a leading astrologer. I don't know if you've ever had Dr. Turi on your show. I know. Yes, I have, yeah. Um, y- you know, so he's going to be there. There's there's Shannon Silva of uh, Ghost Hunters International. She's going to be there. Uh, so we're going to pretty much be talking about ghost hunting, like what to really expect from from the paranormal when, when you, that, well, at least that aspect of it. Y- you know, um, I'm going to be doing gallery readings, which is basically me connecting with the other side. Um, and, and, um, uh, and then as well as taking part in, in haunting investigations, there's going to be times for autographs and stuff. Uh, I'll have copies of TAP's Paranormal Magazine, which I, I write my syndicated column in. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be signing that as well as pictures and all this other stuff that we're going to be doing. So it's really going to be a good a good thing. The, the San Carlos has supposedly uh, been haunted by Marilyn Monroe and, and, and uh, y- you know... Um, May West and all these other, you, you know, fancy people. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of excited to be a part of it to just see if I can, you know, get a glimpse or, or see if because you have your paranormal investigators and then you have your your sensitives and your psychics that walk into a place and say, yeah, this isn't really as big as what it's supposed to be. And then you've got your nut bars, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then <laughs> you, you know, and the other thing is though, is what I wanted to say before we close We've out. We've got about show, 10 is, seconds. It's is, is really about that you can't just, if, you, if you're a believer in the paranormal, you have to accept all aspects of the paranormal. You can't really get selective. Mm-hmm. You can't say, well, I believe in the, uh, ghosts, but I don't believe in UFOs. You, you know, I, I think that you have to really kind of encompass everything between angels and, and you know, your ascended masters and fairies and, and UFOs and, and anything else, any other type of phenomenon that happens. I think that you need, if you're going to accept it, you can't really be a nitpicker. William, and, take and care of yourself. We've run out of time. William Constantine, www.williamconstantine.com. When I come back from the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past, Ralph Alice will be joining me. We're going to be talking about ancient times, ancient mysteries, and much more. one 877 is toll free. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is The X Zone. Heard around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network.